Some years ago, I read of a person who wanted to clean out his garage. The garage was filled with everything from paint cans to gardening tools. There were flower pots, bicycles, fans for the summer, and a snow plow for the winter. This two car garage was so crowded, there was not even enough room for a car to be parked in there. Which, when you come to think about it, was the original purpose the garage was built. The image came to mind as a parishioner named Paul recently described his life in his family. Paul's a married man. He has a lovely wife and three teenage children, two girls and a boy. Paul told me of his busy schedule, how his wife Betty works three days a week and their children, Lynn, Sharon and Jack, are hardly ever home because of school, part-time jobs, and after-school activities, and time spent with friends. Well, Paul came to me to express his concern that his children were slipping away from him. Paul was lonely for them. He missed their company. He remembered times when they were all preteens. They spent weekends together, swimming, and going for walks in the summer and ice skating and skiing in the winter. They would play board games on a Saturday night, and they went to the same mass on Sunday morning. Now, it was a rare occasion that all five members of the family ever sat down together for a meal or a conversation. Paul wondered where he had gone wrong. Well, the image of a two-car garage that did not have any room for a car came back to mind. Paul and I talked about the McDonald family, the Murphy family, but what if the members of the family do not make time for one another? What if the members of a family never come together as family? Are they still a family? It is the bonds which we form today that will sustain us in the future. Wives and husbands have to get to know each other. The getting to know one another is not something that takes place during the courtship time alone. Getting to know one another is an ongoing process. People can fall out of love when they do not take time for one another. They can fall out of love when they lose the ability to communicate with one another. One's family is always one's family. But the quality of family life is connected to moments which are shared good times recalled, and time spent getting to know one another anew. Well, I suggested to Paul that he talk to his wife, Betty, and see how she was feeling. Paul soon discovered that Betty was missing time with the kids just as much as Paul was. They decided to use the opportunity of Betty's birthday to invite their three children to a special supper. The meal took place as scheduled, and as they sat around the table, Jack the son said, remember the times which we used to skate on Kent's Pond, and remember mom always brought us hot chocolate? Lynn then said, remember how dad used to always fall down each time he tried to skate backwards? They all laughed. It was Sharon, the eldest daughter, who a bit later on in the conversation spoke up. This is fun. We should try to do this more often. Ideally, a garage needs to have space for a car. Ideally, a family needs time and space for each other. I was thinking of these things recently when I read the gospel story in which Jesus said to his apostles, come away and rest a while. Jesus realized that it was easy to find 12 apostles. The challenge would be helping them to grow as a community, and that involved time together and conversation with one another. In this era of busy schedules and families often spread across the country and around the world, may you find the time and the means to connect and reconnect with those who you love. Family equals community. It is from the word community that we find the word communion. 
our communion with one another around the Eucharistic table in church, or our communion with one another around the family table is enhanced each time we gather and each time we share with one another the joys and the sorrows of life.